Hi, George here. Sometimes you may be using Instagram and you want to get your images to fit on the Instagram square format. This may or may not be easy to do depending upon your picture. Now, I'll show you several different ways to do this. And again, depending upon your needs, you can choose one or the other. In this video, we're gonna be taking three rectangular images and then converting these into three square images using different techniques because of different needs for each one of the pictures. Now, I'll be using a variety of tools in this and techniques. We're covering a lot of ground. If you want to learn a lot more about how to use Photoshop Elements, and if you're new to Photoshop Elements, the best way to learn this program is to get my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. I'll put a link for that in the description. Okay, let's go ahead, get back to our original images and see how this is done. Now, the easiest one is if you can just crop into your image. Let's go here, grab the crop tool. I'll set the crop at a square size. Five by five is a nice square size. There we go, it's now cropped in. On this one though, we lose a lot of that space around the figure, so it's not really a good solution for this particular image. There's a right up against the edge over here. In this case, what I wanna do is come in a bit on the sides and add more top and bottom. Very tricky to get this to look right, so we'll save this one for last. Let's go to the easiest thing. Over here to our horses. Now I could just crop in on the horses if I wanted to. Let's say I wanted to keep this whole picture in here. Now because this picture has a nice kind of random sky above here, kind of random grass down below, this one's the easiest one of all of these because there's a guided edit for this. Go up to Guided, go to the Special Edits section, and Extend Background. And this only works sometimes, it's a special case, but if you have kind of a nice random top and a random bottom, this works out fairly well. If you want to small if you're cropping in, well, cropping in is easy, it's extending that's hard. Go to Canvas Size, set this at Square. This always drops into the middle like that. You can't move the image up or down, it's always in the middle and then it selects these two areas here, top and bottom, and then come down. You can either auto fill these or extend these. Let's see how these both work. I'll do auto fill. And that's what we get. It comes in and basically does a content aware fill for the top section and content aware fill for the bottom. Oftentimes, this is all you need. In this case, that worked out perfectly well. But I can kind of see some line things happening in here. So it may not be the best solution. Let's just hit this button here to refresh. We'll do this one again. Canvas size square. Let's do extend this time. And I want to protect some stuff because it's going to be stretching our image. So I use the right bracket here, bring my brush size up. And I'm going to paint over everything I want to keep as is. And it's going to be the horses, of course. Get the whole horse in here. There we go. This whole area in here. And straight across. And this horse in here. Also, I want to keep that mountain and the horizon line right here, the water line. All of that I want to keep as is. I don't want to touch any of that stuff. And then click on done. And it comes in and it stretches the image to fit that. It gives us a bit more at the bottom and a lot more at the top. It is square though, so there's another option. Obviously different looks. You can try both and see which one works out best for you. But that did a pretty good job for us. This looks realistic. And the easiest one here is just to do the square and autofill right there. Okay, so that's one. I'm just going to cancel out of this. Back to advanced. Our second one, right here, if you don't want to touch the bottom, if you want to keep the middle section the same and you only want to change the top, then this takes a special technique. For this one, I'm going to be extending our canvas size. So first I'll right click over here and duplicate layer, choose OK. Hide that background. Let's now bring in our new sky image in here. OK, file. I'll place this one right there and place. It's a little bit small, as you can see. I'm going to stretch this out to fit, so it just fits the width. It's in behind as well. I'm just going by the guidelines in there. I hide that and see here's our image. Let's now add some size at the top of the image to make it a square image. Image, resize, and canvas size. Change these two pixels. Set this at the bottom. And let's make the height match the width, 1920. Here we go, choose OK. And then because there's more space at the top of the picture up here, if I bring in our background sky, let's just hide this, and I'll drag it to the top. Just kind of showing up in the background there. Let's now get rid of this sky in here. I'll zoom in. And this time, let's do something different. And let's make a selection, get the selection tool here. Let's come down and grab the polygonal lasso tool. Then we'll come in here and make our selection. Now be very careful with this tool. If you click too fast, the selection will collapse and you'll have to start over again, which you don't want to do. 
Just take your time, take a breath between each time you click on a point so that it doesn't collapse on you. It just works straight across here. And when you get to a round area here, just put your dots closer together. And especially when you're doing around something, this is where you have a tendency to click too fast. So just be careful, slow down, especially around curved areas. So you don't close in or collapse your selection. Now you can come in and add to or subtract from your selection, but it's easier if you don't have to do that. It's better to get it all in one shot. So that's what we'll try here. Now I don't guarantee this is gonna work. Doing these selections here with lots of selections, it's very easy to come in and do a double click by accident. You know, then have to come in and adjust it. If that happens, I'll go ahead and I'll show that. Hopefully we won't do that on this video. Okay, let's take it up along the edge of this roof line here. I'll push over here to the side and that makes the image auto scroll, which makes it real easy to keep on working. And up around the top up here. And you could use a different selection tool if you wanted to. You could try using the background eraser tool, which frequently does not work. Or you could try the magnetic lasso. Sometimes that's great, sometimes it's not. It really depends. Okay, you need to take care of that. That's gonna be a bit trickier. And I just come around to this bit in here and up and around. I'll go clear on this bit here. And then once I get this done, I'll pause the video and then finish doing the roof line. And as soon as I'm done, I'll bring the video back up again and we'll bring in that background. You see these little detail areas like this? Just take your time, make sure you wait a beat between each click and you should be okay. It's this kind of detail that will mess this job up using this particular tool. So again, it all is about getting into kind of a Zen mode when you're doing this. Okay, I'm going to pause the video at this point and then I'll bring it right back up as soon as I finish making the selection on the rest of these roofs. And I'll then take care of bringing in our new sky in the background. Okay, there we go. I went clear around the tops of the buildings and then out and around across the top and then down to this side. Opens that area up. Let's make a layer mask out of this. I'm going to invert this. Select inverse. So now just the bottom area is selected and this top area here. Click on layer mask. And that then hides that sky section and shows the new sky in behind. So we made this into a square format by adding in some more space and then putting in a new sky for it. So pretty straightforward on making this fix. It's just a little tricky making that selection around all that stuff in here on the top of these roofs. Okay, let's go over here to the most difficult one. Let's say I wanted to give myself more space on the top and the bottom and I wanted it square. So for this, it's a couple of steps. Again, I'll make a duplicate layer, choose OK hide the background, and we'll start off by doing a crop in here. I don't want to crop to square, so I'll set no restriction. Here's the crop tool, and I'll make a crop for the whole thing just like that. I'll then grab these sides and pull these in a bit. So I have about the right amount of space on the two sides, so that looks pretty good here. It looks pretty good over here on this side. That's okay. It's not really quite square, but that's not bad. Let's choose okay on this one. So we have our side dimensions okay. Now we need to have more space on top and at the bottom. So for that, let's go back to our move tool and then up to image, resize and canvas size. Leave this centered, leave your anchor centered. Again, change this to pixels and you'll want the height to match the width. 1398, choose okay. And we get just a little bit above and a little bit below. We can now fill that with some clone stamp work but I want to protect our dancer in here at the top and at the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll use the regular lasso selection tool, make sure we're sitting here at a new selection and I'll come in fairly close. This is not gonna be a careful selection at all, doesn't need to be. It can be even anything I want right down through here, it doesn't matter. Let's come down and do fairly close to the ankle right down in here. And then from here on up again, doesn't really matter over here, we're not doing anything in there and then carefully up around the head here and pretty close. Let's go to the refine edge and I'm gonna come in here. I'm just going to refine the edge right around the head. That's what I care about. Right in there and right around the ankle, a little bit right down here. That's good. Let's go back out to a selection this time. Choose okay, so we're not actually making a layer mask, we're just making a selection. And I wanna have the outside area selected. So go up to select, inverse, and the outset area is now selected. And now we can do some clone stamp work in here. Go to our clone stamp tool. Have it set on a soft edge brush. It's a pretty good size, that works. I'm just gonna copy some of this stuff here and just push it up to the top. First, I'll start off 
are up in here in behind her head. So I'm going to grab right over here with the Alt key down and click somewhere in there. I'll just grab that bit. I'll move that in behind her head up here. Just put some of that in like that. And then it's a matter of coming in and just adding in more stuff and recreating a new background in here based upon what we have that's already existing. Luckily, it's all out of focus, which helps. And try to match colors where you can. And try to match kind of the feel of the area. It may take several shots. You can see I'm going back and clicking a lot on this to give me a good area to match. Make sure you go in there and get all of that. Looking real closely right up in here, there's a little bit of checkerboard pattern still showing there. So I'll make sure I get that covered. Add some transparency. You want to have all transparency gone. There we go. Okay, here's our nice top is fixed. Let's now do the bottom area. I'll grab some of this stuff right here. And I'll just overlap that right into this area. That should work out pretty well. I'll just use some of that to fill in the rest of this area down here. Luckily, this is really random, so this is pretty easy to do. And trying to keep a good look on that. And I think that works. Just a little bit right there just to hide any duplication. There we go. Control D to deselect. And we've now extended that background out, but it took cropping in a little bit to make this thing work. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about how to use Photoshop Elements, learn how to use all the different tools, all the menus up here, all the different panels on the right-hand side, and also learn how to use that Elements Organizer, I have all of that stuff in my complete training for Photoshop Elements. And you can find out more about that on my website, and I'll put a link for that in the description. Make sure you hit that like button, click on subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.